Good morning or afternoon or evening whenever you're seeing this. <laughs> I'm Petra. I'm your faith bestie and I'm so excited to welcome you back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, welcome. Just leave off the back part. <laughs> I'm so excited because today we have a discussion that I've been excited to have with you. I've actually been prepping for this because y'all 2024 is around the corner. Like Oh my gosh, can y'all believe it? We are officially in November and there are some things that we need to do before we end this year to ensure that 2024 starts well and remains well. And so I'm really excited to do that with you today. We're going to do some strategy today. So if you're up for that, I want you to get your notepad, get your pen, sorry, those are my notes, and get your coffee. And let's hop into this conversation about a 60 day reset in preparation for 2024. Really, really excited to have this conversation with you because we are a little under 60 days out, but we're gonna pretend that we're 60 days out, okay? <laughs> We are going to do um, a conversation on a 60 day reset in preparation for 2024. And that's really important because, again, when you're going into a new season, a new year, you want to make sure that you are in the proper mindset to really effectively effectively navigate the year, not doing it in a rush, not doing it overwhelmed and not having unnecessary anxiety about results. And so to do that, you have to go ahead and recalibrate early so that your mind is fresh when you hit January 1st. Okay. So hold on one second. I hear a bunch of dings. I'm going to cut off my stuff in the background. One sec. Okay. So I'm back. Now we shouldn't hear any more dings in the background. We can really, really hop into it. And honestly, that's one of the first things that I'm going to tell you to do when you're talking about prepping for this next year and doing a 60 day reset, cut off the distractions, cut off the distractions. When you're talking about anything, when it comes to do with strategy, when it comes to execution, implementation, when it comes um, to drafting things, you need to have set aside time. You need to have set aside space and there need to be no distractions so that you could actually get the work done. If you're constantly distracted, then you're being pulled away from the task at hand. And that already starts you in a place of being unfocused, which means your year is going to start off being unfocused because what you strategize will be chaotic and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So the very first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to remove the distractions. It's important. Okay. Trust me, you don't need distractions, especially when you're talking about resetting and recalibrating for the new year. Okay. All right. Then, excuse me, the second thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to really begin to schedule your rest. I know you guys are probably like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> when we get to the stuff we're writing down, when do we get to the stuff that we're actually doing? Trust me on this. Trust me. Before you begin to dive into the work of strategy, before you begin to dive into the work of resetting yourself, you actually need to schedule in rest. And the reason is this. This entire year you have been working, this entire year, you have been doing major, major output, but you probably have not rested in the way that you actually need to. And I'm not just talking about sleep, okay? I'm talking about one, sleep, but also really pulling yourself away from the daily activities, really pulling yourself away from the other obligations that you have and just sitting with yourself, meditating, reading the word, being able to journal, that's a part of rest. And the reason it's a part of rest is because it's releasing your mind from the weight of the thoughts and the planning. Okay. And that's important because as you begin to do that, your elasticity in your mind begins to return. It's not so stretched out right now. Most of us are at capacity. Most of us are at capacity, but by scheduling in the rest, your body begins to learn, okay, I can release these things. I can release these things. She's going to take the time to just be calm. She's going to take the time to clear her head. She's going to take the time 
to just get in touch with who she is at this moment. It's not about planning the next thing. It's not about showing up for the next person. It's really about showing up for herself and just sitting with herself. And that's key. That's really, really key. So you have to begin to schedule in your rest. And again, remember, rest is not just sleeping. It is sleeping, but it's not just that. It's also meditating. It's also praying. It's also journaling. It's also just sitting in the quiet. Or if you like worship music, just having that and just sitting, not having any tasks that have to be done, not having any to-do lists that have to be done schedule in the rest. My suggestion is to have at least 15 minutes a day of quality rest, whatever that looks like for you, 15 minutes a day of quality rest. And I want you to do it from now all the way through. And if you can continue it through 2024, do it. Trust me, it will change everything for you. But for sure, these last 60 days of 2023, schedule in 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, excuse me, of rest. You need to do it. Okay, you need to do it. All right. Now, (laughs) we're almost, we're almost, almost to the part that you're probably waiting on when you're talking about the reset. Here's the thing. I thought I cut off everything in the background. Really? Really, y'all? Okay, it's off now. (laughs) What else I want you to do is to begin to go through your connections. When you're talking about resetting, you need to be thinking about what are the relationships that I have and the relationships that I want to keep. What are the relationships that I have and what are the relationships that I want to keep? And the reason that you want to do this very early in the reset process is because you need to make sure that you have the people that will support the reset. You need to make sure that you have the people that will support the reset. If you're doing this... um this reset and this recalibration with people that are not supportive of your evolution and your growth, then you're really not going to get very far. Or even if you get far, it'll be with a lot of anxiety, a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos. And that's actually not what you're trying to take into 2024. So you need to really review the connections and the relationships that you have to make sure that they're the ones that you want to keep. And I'm not saying send a breakup letter to people or break up text or just start ghosting people. That's not what I'm saying. But what you do need to do is to make sure that you're taking inventory of your inner sanctum. Okay, those people that are closest to you, the way that you're engaging with them, the way that you're connecting with them, the things that you're sharing with them, the way that you're showing up in those relationships, you have to take inventory of that. And if there are some relationships that you know that you need to be showing up in more or that you need to invest in more, now is the time to start. Because as you get into 2024, things are going to accelerate and you're going to need to have a steady foundation for the relationships that you're going to carry in. I'm sorry, guys, about the light. The actual natural lighting, the sun is coming up. So there there are things that you really need to consider, okay? So for me, the Lord has sent some amazing, amazing people to me in 2023 um, in a way that has completely and utterly blown my mind. And I know that these people are meant to be long-term friends and also within my inner sanctuary, which is very interesting to me because... um, Y'all know, I already have really good friends. I wasn't looking for any new friends. I was like, Lord, I'm good on that. But he told me, he said, the way that I am going to move you in 2024, you are going to need additional support and different support. And it doesn't take away from those who are already a support system for you, but it will add to it and it will give it depth. And I have seen that already. And so even now I'm taking the time to be more intentional with these new relationships and connecting with them and building and praying with them and strategizing with them about what our relationship is actually going to look like. And you may say that that's overkill, but trust me, it's not. You want to strategize about what your relationship actually is. What are you both looking for? What do you both bring to the table? What are your expectations of each other as human beings? Not of the relationship, but as human beings, right? Like if you out there doing that, I need to know that because what I'm, you're not going to be a reflection of me, okay? Not, or okay, I'm down with that. Or I want to make sure that I'm representing you well, right? Like those are things that are really, really important that you want to consider when you're talking about reviewing your relationship so you know where to invest properly. The other thing that you want to do 
I think we're on number four now. I think this is, I think this is number four is really begin to draft your to grow list, not your to do list, your to grow list. Your to grow list is those areas that you are growing in relationship with God and focusing on his plan. So the area that you're lacking to meet the requirements of his plan. Okay. Where do you need to grow? Where do you need to stretch? What are the things that God is calling you to do that you need to begin to step up into? What are the things that God is calling you to do that you know, hey, I need to grow up. I need to mature before I can handle this. What are the areas of stewardship that you really need to tap into? You've got to start begin to draft your, you've got to start to begin. Those are the same words. You've got to start to draft your to grow list. Okay. It's not your to-do list. This is not about um, buying the house. This is not about getting the new car or the new job. This is strategically you as a person. How can you grow? How can you begin to evolve and develop into the woman that God has called you to be? Your to-grow list is more important than your to-do list. Your to-do list will happen when you become the woman that God has called you to be because then he can trust this woman to steward the things that you're asking for. Your to-do list does not take priority over your to-grow list because unless you grow and evolve into the woman that God has called you to be, you will never be the fully equipped steward for the things that you're asking for on the to-do list. This one takes priority. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to you. So definitely begin to draft your to grow list and then share it with those people who were in step three that have become now your inner circle that have become your accountability partners. Begin to share it with them. Like, I believe that God is calling me here. I believe that God is wanting me to grow in these areas. I need you to be praying with me. I need you to help hold me accountable. Share the word with me. If God begins to give you visions and dreams about what I'm supposed to be doing, please share that with me. If he begins to give you scriptures that I need to be meditating on, please share that with me. I tell my girls all the time, listen, if God tells you something about me or he tells you something about what I'm doing, tell me. Tell me because I want to know because one, my spirit should come into agreement, right? But also I want to make sure that I'm in alignment with what it is. And that's important. Okay. So you're already, you're working on your to grow list. Um, uh Uh-oh, here comes E. The other thing that you want to think about when you're talking about resetting for the next year is begin to set a practice of healthy habits. Those things that you've done this year that you know were not healthy but were convenient, you're going to have to start pulling them out within these last 60 days. Those things that you know were not healthy, but they were convenient. You're going to have to start pulling them out because you need to begin to have healthy habits, healthy regimens. Okay. That's really, really key. It could be your eating. It could be your exercise. It could be the way that you're talking to people or talking to yourself. It could be the way that you're resting. It could be the way that you're doing your work. If you're a procrastinator, beginning to give yourself more time, doing more time management. If it is, um, not showing up in the way that you're supposed to show up in your relationships, whatever it is, begin to remove the convenient habits and replace them with healthy habits. Especially when you're talking about these last 60 days, give yourself 60 days room so you begin to master it so that once you get to 2024, you're not really worried about these things as much. Okay. Um, The next thing that I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to speed up a little bit because I hear her little feet. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to really find a place of worship. Find a place of worship, not online, in person. And here's the thing. I watch online ministry all the time, okay? Because I can't make it into the physical house all the time, but also just during the week, I need extra. Like, I love the word. Y'all know that about me. I love the word. So I will look online worship all the time, online church all the time. But when it comes to something set during my week of connection and community, you need to do that. One, because you need to have community around you that is actually able to hold you accountable and that you're connected with. Say, hey, mama. She just woke up, guys. You say good morning. She's over it. Also, y'all be praying with me. She's she's working on potty training, so and she's and you're dry. Good job, good job. But you need the community that's in person that can hold you accountable, but also that you can plug into so that you're able to give back to your community. Get to a church where you're doing community service, where you're able to join um, one of the teams at church, so you're working in the kingdom. Do the thing. Online service is great as a supplement, not as a primary. 
You need to have community before you get into 2024. You need to be doing actual work in the kingdom. We can do work for man all the time, but when it comes to God, we need to prioritize. Good morning. We need to prioritize, okay? So that's, Mama. that's it. Yes, baby. Daddy um took Jack and uh, Sterling to school. So those are things that are important. Okay. Um, and then another thing to do when you're talking about resetting is beginning to journal. I know we talked about it a little bit in the rest portion, but if you're not journaling, you need to journal now. And the reason that you want to do that is because one, you need to begin to detox your brain, dump your thoughts. You don't want to hold everything and go to sleep with it swirling in your mind. But also by journaling, you're able to learn yourself better and see your growth because right now you're just, you know, you're kind of floating. But if you journal, you'll begin to go back and reread those entries and see how much you have grown. So it's really good to highlight where you're going and where you've been, where you're going and where you have been. Okay, listen. Let me do this real quick. Let me go be a mom because I feel the Holy Spirit telling me that I need to take a moment and do that. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. And again, y'all, I am so sorry about lighting here. I tried to switch my chair a little bit so that the natural lighting is not doing a thing. But I also have lights up in here. So I don't know, but we're still going to get this done. So just take it all in love, y'all. We're still figuring out the whole recording thing. Like, it's a process. I don't, this is a total deviation from what we're talking about, but it is a process to figure out how to record and share the information with you all because I am a natural light person. Um, and honestly, even the lights that I have, they make me look extra yellow. Like, it's just so much stuff. So um, the team and I are going to be working on finding the right lights, all the things to make this a much smoother experience for you all. But let's be real for like five seconds, like five seconds. I'm a real person. <laughs> Y'all are real people. And this is life. Like this is life. Like Everything is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be streamlined. It's not going to always be aesthetically pleasing. Like, that's just the truth. And as faith besties, like, we're learning how to navigate life well, not perfectly. We are learning how to navigate life well, not perfectly. And I really believe that that is what God has called me to do. And he makes it apparent every time I hop on here to talk to y'all. Like, it's never going to be perfect, but it is going to be his. And because of that, we are actually being equipped with how to live well in every situation, in every season. We're not called to be perfect, but we're called to be perfected. And so when we lean into that as faith besties, we're saying, listen, I'm going to trust you to give me the knowledge that God has given you. I'm going to apply it. And then I'm going to give that knowledge to somebody else. Because if we're friends, then we're growing together and we're teaching others. It's not stagnant and we're not gatekeepers. We make sure that we're all growing and stretching, which goes back to our last little thing that we talked about, which is our to grow list. Like we are growing. That being said, I have like 15 minutes and then I have another meeting that I have to hop into because your girl got a real job until the Lord releases her. So here we are. Um, so what I would highly, highly suggest is when you're talking about resetting for um, 2024 is getting yourself a good planner, a really, really good planner. And this is important because let me explain it to you, okay? Planners are not just for writing down your meetings. Planners are not just for your to-do list. Planners are to have one set aside space where you're able to map out your months, your weeks, and your days in a way that is aligned with God's plan. So that way you are not overly exerting yourself, that you are not allowing your anxiety to take hold of you, that you're able to properly prioritize, and you're able to see your accomplishments and then those areas where you can still grow. That's the real purpose of a planner. Trust me, that is the real purpose of it. I am a planner girl. I have used planners for years to the point that I was led to create a planner of my own. So this is the Hey Pretty Let's Set Faith Goals Planner. It is an undated planner. You can use any planner, y'all. This isn't me saying that you have to buy this planner at all. I would love for you to buy this planner because I believe that this is not just any planner. I believe that it is a strategic tool from the Lord for your toolkit to live your life well. However, if there are other planners that you like, please go forth and use them, but use them use them okay map yourself out 
in this one, um, we have... <clears throat> We have your prayer list. We have your highlights from the week. We have note sections. We have your days, um, like how you can map out your days and your faith goals list. Listen, we also have at the end of the month, let me see if I can get to it relatively quickly. This is a, a new one, guys. This isn't my personal one. You guys have seen my personal one. It was crazy full. We also have monthly check-ins at the end of it. So you can actually like check in with yourself. And they even ask, have you grown this path month? Um, what two things are you going to work towards improving this coming up? Like, this is what you need. You need something that is helping you to see yourself and where you're going and that you're able to fully and properly and effectively prioritize what you're working on in alignment with God's plan. That being said, I will also suggest after this, this step, that, that's a separate step is getting a good planner. The other one I would suggest is getting some good books to kind of get your mind ready so that you're taking in the right information and properly um, pulling yourself together. One of them would be my book, Faith Goals. Um, it was my first book and it is an amazing, amazing devotional. It's a 30 day devotional. And I would highly suggest that before this year is up, that you get that book and you use it to really close out this recalibration season for yourself. And, and this is, again, why? One, because you want a devotional because it helps you to start your day or end your day with scripture, um, with prayer, and with affirmations. It also brings you into real life stories or biblical stories that helps to position you in the best way to see yourself in the word, but more importantly, in today's life, living well. So faith goals. And we're going to actually, actually, we'll put the picture right here. Faith goals. You can get this book. Trust me, it will bless you. This is something that I would highly, highly suggest. The Power of Consecration is another one. This is by Jeremiah Johnson. It was given to me by my really, really good friend, Dawn. And I have read this book multiple times. I have given it to my mentees, um, some of my mentees as well. The Power of Consecration. This book is a, a easy read, but it is a good read. And it will really help to, again, get you recalibrated, get you reset so that you're pulling away from other things and you're consecrating your heart and your mind to God. Okay. We have talked a little bit about what consecration is. Um, and it is setting aside time to be with God, like solely with him. And so this is a really, really great book to do that. I highly, highly, highly recommend this as you begin, um, your recalibration season. Okay. This is one. Um, and then the other one, um, that I would, uh, recommend if you're interested and this is not necessarily the same but it is a way to help you to put your testimony into perspective because sometimes we allow our testimonies to stagnate us and so when you read um, the book hey pretty it will help you to realize that your testimony is supposed to be propulsion it is not supposed to be a stop okay so that is also an opportunity for you to read as well so again getting some really good books in you, but again get a planner y'all get a planner Read the Power of Consecration. Read the book Faith Goals. Trust me, these are things that you're going to want to have in your arsenal as you prepare for 2024. Um, and I don't say it because I wrote some of them. I say it because God gave them and because God was strategic about how he gave them. And I want to be strategic about how I tell you about them. Okay. Um, and then we just have two more, two more that I want to go over when we're talking about resetting in these last 60 days. The two more things that I want to talk about. I really want to talk about um, the way that you talk to you. We can no longer undermine the gifts, talents, and skills that God has given us. We can no longer undermine the value and worth that God inherently placed on us with our creation. And we can no longer undermine the fact that we are called to take up space in this world for his glory. We can't keep talking to ourselves crazy. We can't keep doubting ourselves. We can't keep downing ourselves because when we do that, we're doubting God and we're downing God. And that is unacceptable. We have to be careful about how we talk to ourselves beginning today and throughout the rest of the year and into the next years, okay? It is really important that we begin to speak positive affirmations over our life, that we begin to speak the word over our life, and that we begin to show up as the confident women that God has called us to be. And here's the thing. God gave us dominion over the earth. You have to show that. You show up confidently. Speaking to yourself as though you were anything less than God's daughter is inappropriate and disrespectful to God. 
It is inappropriate and disrespectful to God. And when you do that, it makes it very difficult for you to show up in your fullness. And when we're talking about what God is going to be in 2020, what is God, what is God is going to do, excuse me, what God is going to do in 2024, then we have to be fully prepared, but also really able to steward the fullness of his blessings. If we're constantly, when people are saying, wow, you're doing this, you're doing that, and oh my goodness, and this, like, I can't believe it. you're so amazing, you're so, and we're like, oh, you know, I don't know, I'm really this. Listen, you're not ready to steward the fullness that God is about to extend to you, and you really need to get there, okay? You got to get there. Here comes E with her shoes. So I am going to encourage you that as you begin this reset, check how you're talking to yourself, yeah. Check how you're talking to yourself. Yes, my love. Dad. Okay, last one, and then we're done for this 60-day reset, okay? The very last thing that I want you to do is to stop and ask God what his plans for 2024 are. Sometimes we'll get ahead of ourselves and we'll map out our entire year without asking God one time what it is he has planned and what it is he wants us to be prepared for. The very best thing that you can do to prepare for 2024 is to stop and talk to God about what 2024 is actually going to look like for you and how he wants you to show up there. That's the best thing that you can do. Put the responsibility on yourself of mapping out 2024. That's a burden that you don't need. Give the burden back to God. Give him the responsibility of telling you what 2024 is going to be and how you should show up there and where you need to be in relation to each of your benchmarks. And then watch how 2024 is accelerated for you because you're doing it God's way. It's really simple. It's really, really simple. Stop and talk to God. That's the last thing that I would say as you prepare for 2024. You want me to open, turn that on for you? Okay. She's moody. That's my cue. I And it's also like four minutes before my meeting. So that's also God. So I am going to encourage you to save this video, to share this video, and then to comment below. What is it that you're going to apply? What are some other things that you can do to reset and prepare for 2024? I'd love to hear them. And I'm sure the rest of the pretty crew will read the comments too. And they love to learn right alongside you. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I love you. I hope that you have an amazing, amazing weekend. Oh, and if you have not gotten your tickets to the Hey Pretty Conference where we can meet in person and you can hang out with the rest of the Pretty crew, go to heyprettylife.com to get your tickets. We are selling out fast, but we're going to be in Jacksonville and I don't want you to miss this. It is going to be a supernatural move of God as we begin to tear down strongholds, deliver women from their own bondage, and begin to set up altars in the name of God. It's going to be amazing. Okay, I gotta go. Love y'all. Bye.